Hi everyone and welcome back. We are joined by the amazing Cubicle 7. So um, any of you guys that are fans of your, your, your Warhammer and your 40K, mm. you're going to enjoy this one. You're going to enjoy this one. Um, we have Dom and Emmett on the line. Hey Dom, hey Emmett, how are you guys? Hi, good thanks. How are you? Um, uh, uh, all the better for seeing you dudes. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, uh, Cubicle 7, um, uh, tell us a little bit about the company first. Sure, so uh, we have been going for, oh gosh, how long is it now? Um, I think we'll be 14 towards the end of this year. Um, so uh, we've, uh, we're, we're quite well established. Um, and uh, we, uh, at the moment, we are producing the... Uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition um, and uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soulbound and the Warhammer 40,000 Wrath and Glory role-playing games and the Doctor Who role-playing game and uh, yeah, loads of others that we've done over the years. So yeah, uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah we've, uh, we're having fun, winning awards, doing good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, now, uh, a lot of people will be familiar with your games because uh, uh, they're, they're, uh, not only can they get them from the Cubicle game, uh, the, uh, from the Cubicle 7 website, but mm. uh, FLGS is all over the world stock these things. Mm. Absolutely. Um, yes, we we, uh, we we have a really um, uh, really strong support from the uh, the network of uh, friendly game stores, uh, yeah. which is awesome. You know, we love game stores, and anything we can do to support them is uh, you know, very important for us to do. So uh, we do things like we've got the, the bits and mortar scheme that we're a part of. So if you buy one of our games in your local game store, if they're a member of that scheme, they can give you the PDF um, as a complimentary copy uh, when you buy the physical. Mm -hmm. So oh, nice. um, you know, any, any good stuff like that that we can get involved with to, to help support stores, we do. But uh, yeah, from, um, I don't know, I, I can't pick countries, but um, certainly from the US to Singapore and everywhere in between, um, uh, there's, uh, yeah, you, you'll be able to get all of our stuff. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are also local to us. You're based in Ireland, yeah? Yeah, yes. Yeah, we are uh, just south of Drogheda. Um, so uh, we are in uh, Gormanston. <laughs> yep, Drogheda, Justin. That's somewhere I have to take you because there's a space, there's a place in Drogheda where they've got a dude's head inside a glass case. Me and you're going to go oh, and visit yeah. that. So. Okay. <laughs> See, th th this is something I love about Ireland is we've got that that lovely GH in some of the the names of where we're at, like Drogheda. Drogheda. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, absolutely. We're go we're going to go and look at that m mummified dude's okay, head. Okay. Well, if, 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 if look, I tell you what, if you and me are going down to Drogheda, let's make sure to stop in with these guys while we're there. Do you know what we will do that? Get we, a pint. Whenever whenever COVID. Um, it starts to relax a little bit, so as me and him don't end up as the heads in the glass cabinet. <laughs> um, we will make the journey down. We'll call it a pilgrimage, or if we get a third person, it'll be a crusade, apparently. <laughs> and we will head down to Drogheda to, to, to visit you guys. Uh, well, I mean, like, hang on, my head in a glass jar, it's lovely, it's shiny, it's perfect. Yeah, why not? Yes. <laughs> yes. You drop in um, for a coffee afterwards to recover. <laughs> <laughs> so, for folk, so for folk that are new, um, uh, to RPGs and things like that. Um, mm. uh, what's the best way for them to to kind of start that journey with you guys? Mm. Um, well, I think that the um, we, we, we're trying to put as much um, as much stuff on our website to really help people who are new to RPGs as possible. So uh, we have um, a series of articles and um, and sections that we're we're adding all the time um, that uh, just give you loads of advice and tools on how to get into RPGs, how to get started, and uh, to, uh, we also, when we're looking at, um, at sort of like starter sets, for example, for our games, uh, we, we try to bear in mind people who may not be as familiar with role-playing games at all. So the, um, uh, the, the aim is to give you your first game and really kind of like hold your hand and talk you through it as you're going. So you learn through playing the first adventure. So if you take the, uh, the Warhammer Fantasy role-play starter set, for example, the um, the idea is you've got this, this, this big adventure that starts you off, that teaches you how to play the rules. Um, it's full of you know, awesome moments and um, some hilarious NPCs as well, which are really, really great to interact with. Uh, but, but it's, um, yeah, it takes you on a step by step. You, you learn the rules. And then afterwards, you've got a whole source book uh, for the city of Uber's Reich, which is where the adventure takes place, and a load of adventure scenes that are worked up into like full page ideas. So um, you've got that first experience, and then you've got a load of stuff to work through once you've gone through that first adventure as well. So it gets you into it, but also then gives you a load of stuff to do afterwards. Yeah, mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, uh, let's talk a little bit about what you guys um, uh, have planned um, uh, over the course of this weekend. So. Um, 
we'll just see if this can come up. Yeah, here we go. So <laughs> I'm on the UK Games Expo homepage. I'm going to hit the show floor and uh, we're going to, uh, I'm just going to put it into the search cubicle. Um, where are you? There you oh. go. Cubicle seven. So um, for anybody that is, uh, uh, th that is wondering if you, well, once you sign up, uh, to the virtual con, uh, you can come in here and uh, this is the, the virtual stand. You can join the guys on their Discord server. I highly, highly recommend Discord. It's becoming a real uh, pillar stone of, uh, of us as a tabletop gaming community. Many of us now uh, run Discord communities and uh, we could, it's a great opportunity for us to have crossovers between our, our Discord communities. Mm -hmm. That um, and with, with the fact that this is role-playing games, Discord has so many pieces of functionality to help you play your games. So you can pick your, your favorite role-playing game like the ones from here and just dive into it. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world. I have had role-playing sessions where we've had people from maybe three or four different countries all jumping into the one group and it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so uh, guys, um, you had a seminar on last night um, that is available for people to watch on your YouTube channel, yes? It is, yes. Happy days. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the link to YouTube is also um, on here as well, so mm -hmm. if you want to go to that. So um, what else have you got planned for the weekend, fellas? Uh, so we have virtual booth uh, that you can drop by and uh, have a chat with us. Um, we'll be having people on. I think there's a schedule of times for that. Let me ask the disembodied voices from over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you come along and chat and uh, there will be somebody to interact with. Okay, and on our booth on Discord as well. So um, we have a Discord channel, I think it is. <laughs> um, Yep, the link's on our social media, so we'll have a look there, and um, you can chat to us on Discord. Mm -hmm. uh, what else have we got? We've got um, the YouTube channel. There'll be loads of uh, videos going up on there, so you can uh, have a look at uh, um, yeah, stuff from across our lines. So uh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. plenty to dig into there. And um, uh, I, uh, we're hearing you're doing uh, news and art reveals uh, over the weekend as well. Um, is that via the Discord channel? How, how, how do people uh, find those? Blog. <laughs> ah, the blog. Okay. I know all this stuff. I've mastered my brief. Yes. <laughs> just, just get Donna on the screen, down. <laughs> it's probably best. <laughs> um, right. Um, I want to. I want to zoom in. Now, um, on three of your three of your titles, basically, uh, just to, to get a bit more uh, information on on what's coming up and what's uh, what's in the pipeline. And um, so, if we kick off with the Warhammer uh, Fantasy Roleplay, can you kind of bring us up to date a little bit on on what's going on uh, within that? Mm, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, uh, we have um, uh, with Warhammer uh, Fantasy Roleplay Fourth Edition. Uh, so we have the, the rule book and the starter set, um, which is like the, the, the core of it, really. So the starter set gives you your introduction um, and then has all of that great um, setting material for Uber's right. So it takes a, a, a city in the empire and gives you a load of information um, that you can use to, to, to use as a basis for your games. And then the rule book gives you everything that you need to, uh, to generate your own characters and, um, and play the game. Um, and then you have notes of advice for running it and, and things like that. Um, the, uh, also, the, the stuff that comes with the, the gorgeous Q Workshop uh, dice as well, which I think is worth the price of admission alone. But uh, um, yeah, plenty there to get your teeth into. Uh, then we had uh, Rough Nights and Hard Days, um, which you know, Graham Davis, who is a, you know, a, a Warhammer legend, um, put together uh, a, um, it's a series of adventures that uh, were remastered and represented, um, and with some, um, some extra bits added into that as well. And uh, that gives you adventures to, to get into, uh, maybe follow on from who was right. Um, and uh, then we, we've uh, embarked on the Enemy Within Director's Cut. So um, for those who uh, are, aren't familiar, the, the Enemy Within is one of those classic role-playing campaigns that uh, everybody talks about whenever they go, what's the, the best campaign they've ever run? It's always sort of in the, in, in the there. So with, uh, when we, we started working on Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, I just thought it would be if you're fantastic. It was about 30 years on from when the campaign started being published. It was a fantastic opportunity to, to revisit it and uh, present it to a whole new generation of gamers. So uh, that's what we did. And uh, yeah, thank you, Graham Davis, again, uh, one of the people who worked on it originally has uh, come on board. And uh, he's been uh, yeah, revising it and adding in lots of surprises and ways that you can tweak it. I think uh, 
yeah, one of, one of my favorite things that, that he's done is um, he's been in Grognard boxes, which uh, are for, for people who maybe have played it before and or have players who have played through the campaign originally. Uh, we wanted lots of ways that you could mess with them um, and uh, make sure that they weren't taking advantage of their prior information to, uh, uh, to get things done to you too easily. So, um, yeah, there's, there's so many of those in there and you can kind of tweak pretty much everything that's going on um, so that you can put in loads of surprises. And of course, you know, there's loads of great ideas in them as well that you might just go, oh, I prefer to add that bit. So I'm going to put that bit in my campaign. And uh, yeah, really well done. It's, um, uh, I'm delighted with how it's coming out. So that's uh, a five part campaign. Um, and we're also doing companion volumes for them that give you extra information, loads of your know, NPCs and Little, little bits of, of um, additional detail, additional um, things to do, um, some additional scenarios that you can use. Uh, so yeah, it's, um, it's huge. <laughs> we're, having, we're having possibly too much fun with that one. Um, but uh, that's the, the first part's just out now, and um, the second part's out in PDF, um, and will be out in, in a couple of months' time. And um, yeah, we, we should be getting that kind of... Uh, Every, every few months, then the um, the next part will come out. So uh, we uh, yeah, keep it on the website and social media to uh, to find out a bit more about uh, about that. Um, what else have we had recently? Um, the GM screen, wasn't it, Ahmed? Yeah, the GM screen. Um, oh God, now you're, uh, Uber's Dark Adventures one and two. Um, again, expanding on the the starter set that we have, the the city of Uber's Reich, you can get. Um, Uber's Ark Adventures 1, which I believe has six uh, adventures set in Uber's Ark in and around the town, um, mm. which would advise on kind of, kind of playing them uh, through them and, and, and adapting them as well. Um, then we have Uber's Ark Adventures 2, which is up for pre order, and I think the first two adventures for that are out in, yeah, uh, in PDF. <laughs> yeah, one of the things I love about Uber's Ark Adventures 1 is that the last part is. Uh, Kind of specifically designed to um, to set your characters into the enemy within uh, by means of ruining them utterly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's always yeah, quite fun. I'm quite that's a very rough rough uh, <laughs> end of that six part. Yeah, absolutely. Um, excellent. What else? The dice trays as well. Uh, so um, at the moment we have some some fantastic uh, rough rough dice trays um, who have been made by uh, or rolled up, um, who are absolutely wonderful to work with. And you can get those on our web store and the All Rolled Up web store at the moment. So, uh, yeah, head along and uh, have a look at those. But they're, they're lovely. We've got some of those for some of our other lines as well. Yeah. And the uh, map is back in stock as well, right? Uh, we yeah, just, yeah. A reprint yeah. of the, the Reichland map. Yep. You can get that too. Um, uh, what I'll do, actually, is um, I believe I have the web store um, here. So if I bring it up... Um, I, I can show folk uh, through it. So um, this is the, the Cubicle 7 site. So if they're looking for any of these things, I imagine you will just pop into the shop. In the shop and um, uh, then in the shop, we can have a uh, look down the category of Warhammer Fantasy. And there you go, guys. You can uh, start to have a look at all the bits and pieces that are available for you to uh, pick up. Mm -hmm. There's those uh, Ooh, dice those trays. Are pretty. Aren't they very pretty? Yeah. <laughs> and the the Reekland map. Yeah. Um, oh, it's your funeral just came out as well, which is a, a PDF based on a talk Graham Davis did last year, I believe, yes. at Gen Con. Kind of kind of worked an interactive seminar talk worked into an adventure. So you can see uh, uh, Graham Davis uh, stylized in Wolfrop style on the cover there of the, the PDF, which you can pick up as well, which is just a ton of fun. Awesome, awesome guys. Um, uh, uh, moving on then, um, uh, we have the Age of Sigmar Spellbound. Um, can you bring us, can you bring us up to speed on uh, what the plans are there? Yeah, so um, Soulbound came out uh, about two or three months ago in PDF. So if you if you pre-order, you'll get the the PDF now for the core book. Um, we have the pre-order for the collector's edition up as well. Um, the GM screen, um, along with a supplement for that, a thirty-two page supplement is being printed at the moment too. Um, and we've just released... say, I think that the, the, the Soulbound Collector's Edition is gorgeous. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. I think we, I'm, I'm so pleased with that. The, um, we, we tend to, we, we've done uh, Collector's Editions for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay and for the, um, the Enemy Within. Actually, you can see those, I think, just about behind me, some of the... Uh, we, we absolutely love making stuff like this. Oh, so oh, we're, kind of, we're kind of making the things that we want. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, even with that, I did the, the Soulbound one is... is Absolutely beautiful. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm eagerly awaiting that to, to drop in the <laughs> in the post. Yeah. Uh, so all that core stuff at the moment is uh, being printed right now, isn't it? It's um, I think we're expecting in a few weeks' time it should be be finished. Um, the uh, yeah, I think we, we got um, the, the with the collector's edition is in this beautiful uh, magnet sealed box, um, which um, is I think that's being made at the moment. I can't wait to the first one, but uh, yeah. it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's amazing watching it all happen as well. So you got bits. Sort of going all the way across Europe to have different processes done on them and uh, get all completed. Um, I'm a bit of a print geek as well as a geek on other yeah. things. So yes, I, I, love, I love all that stuff. <laughs> I'm just terrified I won't be in the office when it arrives. That's my, that's yeah. my biggest fear. Yeah, trust, trust me, I know that feeling. Sometimes I'll take a week off in here. I come back and the amount of stuff that has arrived, it's just like, hey, we have this now? What? I missed this? What? No! <laughs> Yeah. So um, yeah, there are, there are kind of our first three releases we launched with. So we have um, yeah the core book, the core book collector's edition, the GM screen, which comes with a supplement that has twenty five one page adventures in it, um, mm. kind of bigger than an adventure seed, shorter than an adventure, um, and we have the the great parch map as well, which um, you can pre order, and I believe Dom can model it for us. Ooh, oh, wow. that is huge! It's lovely, isn't it? That, that is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. The um, it's illustrated by Jared Blando, kind of um, renowned cartographer. You you'll have seen his work everywhere. He's uh, absolutely incredible. He's put in tons of little details in it that you can just you could just lose yourself looking at the map. And it mm. it's great for just in, in, inspiring adventure as well. Like you can just look at the names and look at the little illustrations mm. and things that Jared's done on there and go, yep, let's let's go there and adventure or, you know, let's <laughs> let's stay the hell away from there because it doesn't look like a nice place. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's in in stock now. I think we'll be shipping soon. Um, and then, you know, order, which, which some of the other stuff, the, everything will hopefully ship within uh, within a few weeks of each other. Fantastic. Fantastic. Very Fantastic. Cool. Um, uh, uh, are there are there any other uh, bits in the pipeline for uh, the Age of Sigmar? Yeah, we've uh, we've tons of stuff uh, in the works. So we have we've put up the pre-order for our first campaign called Shadows in the Mist, which is um, set in the city of Anvilgard in um, in the Great Parch, which is this kind of mist shrouded city full of pirates and criminals. Um, so we put up the pre-order for that, and when you pre-order it, you'll get the first adventure straight away. So the the PDF becomes a like thirty or forty page PDF. Mm-hmm. You get straight away for the first adventure called Blood Tide, where you get to do a bit of a seafaring and and hunting down ghouls and and creatures and things. And then um, as each new adventure and uh, is released, you'll get them just directly into your your drive through account or through your Cubicle Seven account. They'll just kind of drop in there when they're ready. Uh, yeah. And it also it'll come with a. 30, 30 plus page guide to the city of Anvilgard, which will give you tons more information on the city and more adventure hooks and things that you can expand your adventures even more. Um, so that's up for pre-order now. We are pretty close for the st- uh, the starter set as well. Hopefully okay. that'll be up for pre-order in the next few weeks. Um, uh-huh. Similar to uh, kind of taking the lead from what we did on Wolfrop, you get you know 48 page adventure that teaches you how to play the rules. And then you have a 64 page adventure to um, the city of Brightspear, which is a brand new city um, in Age of Sigmar that we've kind of gotten to design from the ground up. So it's filled with tons of interesting locations and people and things to meet. And again, just uh, lots of opportunity for, for adventures and shenanigans there. But it's like we did with Warfrop, it's, um, it, it's giving you something else to play after after that initial adventure. So after you've learned the rules, it's it's this campaign tool that you can use to build out your own campaigns and springboard onto the further adventure. So there's a, yeah, there's tons nice. in the box there. If, if anyone's seen this, the, the Wolf Rope starter set, you'll know what you're getting. Character yeah. handouts and tokens and reference sheets and dice and yeah, <laughs> mm. it's, a, it's, it's a packed box. Fantastic. Yeah. Nice. Fantastic. Um, Champions of Order. Yes, we, we revealed that this weekend already. So if you go to our website, you should be able to see it. Uh-huh. Um, that uh, we, re- we showed a cover art for that for anyone who keeps up to speed on the Warhammer Age of Sigmar battle game. You'll recognize the new faction, the uh, Lumineth Realm Lords, which are the new Elven fa- faction allied with Teclas. So they're very magic centric um, uh, uh, elves, kind of kind of reimagined from the old world elves. This kind of new way of looking at things. They're they're really really awesome. So the um, the Champions Border book introduces them as a faction. Mm-hmm. You get uh, load more archetypes, um, like what you get in the core book. 
Um, we introduced sub factions. So again, anyone who's played the battle game, you know that you know you don't just have Stormcast Eternals. There's a myriad of storm hosts within that. Um, so it's kind of sub factions that you can play within those. We have like oh, um, hundred new talents and fifty new spells and miracles and yeah, it's 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 packed with loads of stuff. So it's a player supplement to expand your game of uh, of Soulbound. Um, so that's the. That's kind of next up after the starter set. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we're working on a bestiary, uh, Horrors of the Mortal Realms, which will oh, be about... Lovely. I think yeah. that, that's one of Warren's favorite types of RPG book, is whenever yeah. he can just yeah. sit yeah. down and go, so what deadly, <laughs> dangerous <laughs> creatures can I throw at people today? Yep. I love Ooh, monster that one, that manuals. That one's spiky. I, I am <laughs> a collector of monster manuals. I just... Uh, I, I just think that they're the most fabulous things in the world. It, it takes me back to uh, being a kid when we didn't have internet mm -hmm. and you used to go to the library and I used to get encyclopedias from the library. And my grandfather, um, who I was living with at the time, would say to me, what on earth are you doing getting encyclopedias? But I like the bite size factiness mm -hmm. of it all. Yeah. And a monster manual is like the best version of that, <laughs> <Yeah>. dudes. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show my age a little bit here. Do you remember Encarta? Yes, <laughs> on the on the CD-ROMs, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I remember when it wasn't on CD-ROMs, so it's like... Oh, well, okay, you're showing your age. <laughs> um, so moving on, guys, I, I want to talk a bit about the, the 40K universe. As we know, it is exploding at the moment. This is my favorite. Um, uh, what can you tell us about what's in the pipeline for Wrath and Glory? Uh, it, well, lots. I think. Is best <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we've got a load of um, a, lo a load of books in um, in development at the moment. So there's going to be an awful lot of Wrath and Glory stuff um, coming out. We're, we're starting with. Um, I need to get my list. Uh, Forsaken uh, System, I think, is the next one. I think, yeah. unless. Yeah. Which uh, actually similar enough to what we're doing with Champions of Order. It's it's more player facing options. Um, so expand on the the various different uh, species and and. Types of characters that you can play. Mm -hmm. Yep, and um, there's a reveal about that going up shortly. I'm informed. Mm, so. Keep your eyes peeled, folks. Oh, happy, happy days! Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, it's it's got some more information on uh, the Gilead system as well, which is where the um, the place where uh, the uh, where the Rotten Glory setting material is based. So it's a, a system that's been completely cut off by the opening of the Sigurdrick Maledictum, um, and nobody knows what's going on in the rest of the uh, the universe. Um, it's uh, a very um, tense place, um, and it just poses loads of really interesting um, questions and, and situations to play through. So, you know, when, when you when the light of the Astronomicon's gone out and nothing's getting in or out of the system, um, is there an Imperium still out there? Should we be just carrying on? Because obviously, you know, if you make any changes and then that goes away and the Imperium comes back and goes, we were here all along, mm. you're going to have some pretty serious problems. So um, yeah, there's loads of really interesting things that go on. It's, it's um, as we more explore the system a little bit more as well. There's, there's just there's loads of stuff in there that's um, yeah, I can't wait to, to share with everybody. Yeah. Uh, so we've got the yeah, the Forsaken System Players Guide. Signs of the Fane will be um, the next um, next step after that, um, and that is a uh, a campaign um, that you'll you'll face. We'll introduce a few more of these elements of um, the Gilead system and um, a, a big nasty plot that is taking place. Mm. So uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun play through play testing that one at the moment. Mm. Uh, me and the boys are here in the office are just about to kick off to, into a Wrath and Glory campaign, just in and amongst ourselves. Nice. I cannot wait to dig in. You know, it's, I, I'm a 40k nerd. I'm a 40k nerd. I have come to terms with this, but I cannot wait to jump into a role playing game where I can play a Tanith Guardsman. A Tanith Guardsman. <laughs> Hell yes. Just so I can do a terrible Scottish accent the entire time. Oh, you'll be good at that. <laughs> well, good at being terrible. Um, so um, if people want to find out more, uh, you, you guys have uh, a load of video updates over on the Cubicle 7 YouTube channel related to Wrath and Glory, yeah? That's right. Yep. Uh, but, uh, Zach is, uh, I think, presenting a load of stuff on there. So yeah, there's uh, loads to dig into. Mm -hmm. Grand, grand. Um, anything else you guys would like to cover, um, uh, either of what's happening in the weekend or what you've got coming up? Uh, I completely forgot to mention a load of Wuffer Up stuff. Um, the uh, we, there's so much going on at the moment. So 
Um, the Beyond the Enemy Within, uh, which is something I'm sure people will be, uh, be really interested in finding out about. So we've got loads of books um, in progress at the moment um, for like, what comes next. So the City Guides for Midnheim and Altdorf. Um, we're in the early stages of Magic Book. There's a bestiary, uh, which should go down well. Yes, um, yeah, well, of course, of course. <laughs> I, I'm sure I've forgotten a half dozen things now. There, with the uh, there's uh, we, we, there'll be constant sort of short PDF support. Um, but uh, yeah, there is loads of uh, loads of new material that we're working on. And uh, yeah, just keep an eye on our blog and social media, and uh, you'll find out about uh, about what's going on as we as we start to talk about these these things a bit more. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. guys, there's a few a few quick ones I want to run down over. So um, all orders uh, on cubiclegames.com include a PDF, so you can basically get stuck in straight away uh, mm -hmm. while you're waiting for the, the gorgeous stuff that they produce uh, to arrive in your mailbox. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a bricks and mortar store, these guys will look after you. So um, if you're bricks and mortar, uh, reach out to the uh, Cubicle 7 guys, and they have the bits and mortar uh, program, um, uh, so uh, definitely check that out. Mm -hmm. And if you want to keep, we've got a retailer page on Facebook actually that, that uh, people can get in touch with us via as well. If, uh, if retailers want to uh, get in touch that way, happy days. Excellent. Um, other than that, check out the cubicle7games.com. They've got blog over in the news and events, newsletters, Twitter, Facebook, <laughs> Discord, everything. Um, all, all means to <laughs> keep in touch. Yeah. Um, yeah. Guys, yeah, we're it, working on um, on, on uh, more sort of tools for online play support as well at the moment. So yeah. uh, that's something to we can't really announce anything concrete at the moment. But uh, again, you know, keep keep an eye on the the social media and the blog, and uh, we'll have some developments for you soon. Absolutely fantastic, well, and we we will keep in touch and uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, find out uh, as these things start to come on stream. Mm -hmm. Guys, yeah, um, I'm not sure if you mentioned, but we're actually we're running a lot of games over the weekend, so you can play mm. through Warhammer Fantasy: Night of Blood, um, which is a hugely fun adventure. Um, myself and a couple of other the writers on Soulbound will be running Lights in the Gutter, which may or may not include uh, certain rat creatures in it, but uh, they. Um, you can sign up for those over on the UK Games Expo where you showed previously. So we have tons of games running this weekend. I think we still have some spaces in a couple of the games. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you can just come and chat yeah. to us on Discord and get everything sorted for that. Mm -hmm. um, so if you cut to the web page there, if you guys go to events and you type in Cubicle into the search, you can see all of the, the, the upcoming um, events and live demos uh, that the guys uh, have uh, coming. Mm -hmm loads of them uh, yeah. stretching all the way through um uh, saturday and sunday so uh, i think you should get if you search warhammer you should get more warhammer ah, okay. okay that's a good way yeah. to do it as well yeah so mm -hmm. let's do that warhammer <laughs> and bang and there we go that works perfectly so loads and loads mm -hmm. uh, for you guys to to get stuck into uh this weekend um Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. I was saying it'll be the. I didn't mention Doctor Who as well. It'll be the, oh, yeah. the Doctor Who role playing mm -hmm. game. Um, we're working on a second edition of that at the moment. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, there'll be more on that later in the year. But uh, maybe if people drop by the booth and ask us about that, we can fill in a bit more details. Oh, okay. Happy days. Yeah. Have you anything on your website regarding it? Uh, we have. Yes. Doctor Who RPG. <laughs> yes. Probably more to do with the existing stuff. Do you remember when we did those um, Doctor by Doctor source book series? Yes. It was basically the, the excuse for us to geek out and watch every episode mm. um, <laughs> and stat up everything from the history of the show. Um, wow. So, uh, yeah, there's loads of Doctor Who stuff to, to get your teeth into. And, uh, yeah, we'll oh, the, the Whovians are, are in a dream in this place. Look at that. There was just <laughs> tons of it. Well, the, the, this tons. is perfect for them because. Doesn't matter who you are, if you're a Doctor Who fan, you have your favorite Doctor. Mm. Everybody has their favorite Doctor. Yes. So you can just jump in and start role playing with your favorite Doctor. Tom Baker here. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't know. I always had the, the cycle. Oh, who was the guy before uh, Matt Smith? I forget his name. Oh, oh David Tennant. Hmm? David Tennant. Uh, David Tennant. David Tennant, yes. He was my favorite. And I forgot his name like an idiot. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, do you know what? I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb here. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to say my absolute favourite was Eccleston. Mm. I thought okay? I thought he was a fabulous doctor mm. um, uh, because I uh, I, I, I just uh, I like the way he slightly underplayed it. Mm. 
Um, I, I, I like the grittiness uh, of his doctor, and he, he rejuvenated that for me because, re, you, like, you, whenever that came out, mm. remember, pretty much a lot of our memories of Doctor Who from the past was of the Bertie Bassett monster <laughs> and, <laughs> and all this and all this very weird campy stuff from the yep, uh, from the past. Tinfoil Cybermen. Yeah, so uh, Eccleston and Rose, uh, uh, that, that was a great reboot. It, it was a great reboot. I'm really I will, I will pleased with that. I'll give you that. Guys, I think he's coming back to do some um, audio fiction, isn't he? Or did I hear something oh, like that? Oh, oh yeah, I hope yeah. so. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, Eccleston was w w was brilliant. Look, Dom, Emma, if um, if there's nothing else you need to cover, uh, I would just want to say a massive thank you for uh, for coming on to the live stream. Um, no, it, it's Thanks been a pleasure you. catching up with you guys. And uh, like I said, do keep us posted, and we will mm -hmm. do our best to keep folk posted on all of the stuff that you that you have coming out because. You've tons coming up. And do drop in after you've uh, come and seen Oliver Plunkett's head. Oh, yes. Yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Absolutely, and I, we will. I, I would say you guys pretty much have an open invitation if you ever want to come up here for a weekend of like role playing or anything up here in the, the On Tabletop Visitor Center. You're very welcome. Oh, absolutely. You're very yeah, welcome. we'll take you up on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, folks. Um, uh, we are going to take a quick break. Um, go off and explore and then come back here uh, for the top of the hour uh, where we are going to be talking to Sirenscape. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, mm -hmm. thank you once again to Dom and Emmett. Mm -hmm. It's been awesome. We'll be back soon. Mm -hmm.